Okay, good morning, everyone. Today, we are going to continue our lesson um, about the Power BI. Um, as we um, talk on the last class that I would like um, all of you to have the um, Power BI installed on your computer. So right now, I think all of you already have to have the Power BI. Um, let's continue talking about the Power BI that we have to know for the data visualization. Okay, um, so everyone just like start your Power BI. So um, today we are going to continue talking about like what we did on the last class. Let me have um, um, the review for what we did on last class when we start the Power BI. Um, bear in mind that for anyone who just get your um, Windows based computer uh, um, the power bi version that you have in um, that you have to install to your computer is the power bi desktop uh, is the power bi desktop um, so uh, let's um, start our P um, power bi desktop here so um, when we start power bi I uh, have the first screen here uh, is just the screen that help us in order to um, to use or to load the file that we have and also to have the um, introduction of um, the Power BI or the tutorials of Power BI. You can um, just like watch some videos if you have time, right? Okay, so apart from that one, um, if you want to sign in, actually Power BI allows you to sign in by using your um, hidden Gmail account, same as Microsoft Office 365. Okay, so on the last class, we, um, we had, um, what to say, we had um, getting or we had just like loading the data into our Power BI um, software. Okay, let me just like um, start from the beginning once again for anyone who just like um, didn't do it on the last class, you can just like do it right now so that um, you can just like go along together. Um, I will close this yellow screen first. So if you don't sign in into Power BI, that doesn't matter. But it might be annoying sometimes because um, Power BI may pop up the login screen or sign in screen for you many times. Okay, All right. So in here, for the file that we have, firstly, you have to know first that, okay, um, Power BI normally, um, it doesn't, um, sorry, it is not the tools that we use in order to create your data. The things that you have to know is that um, the, um, I mean, the intention of having Power BI program is to uh, visualize your data that you have. That means <clears throat> majority of the data, you have to prepare them in other software, for example, um, in some corporate, they prepare the file in, um, in terms of Excel. Some of the company, they have their database uh, um, in other forms. Some companies, they purchase the online database from um, other um, information service provider company. Uh, so you can just like um, use the, that kind of file, but you can't create um, or start from scratch of creating the data in Power BI. Uh, um, once you um, get the data into Power BI already, you can manipulate the data. For example, if the data that you have got is not um, what to say, is not what we want. Uh, for example, um, some text uh, in some column might be too long. You can just like cut it short, or you may create another blank. Sorry, not blank, sorry. You can create another column uh, so that um, it is based on the existing data that we have. Uh, or if you have something um, to be added, for example, if you say that the policy would like to uh, implement the campaign that um, we are going to give 1% of our revenue um, for donation uh, for CSR project, something like that. Um, Power BI can manage this uh, by just like adding 1% column into your Power BI. Uh, but if you ask me that, um, what if we just like prepare everything in Excel first and then we download into Power BI? Yes, you can do. 
But the problem is that sometimes if the data that you have got is not in Excel format, for example, it's in the database, you can't create that kind of a spatial column in the database before. So that's why you have to um, use or download the data into Power BI first and let Power BI in order to add another extra column that you want. Uh, okay. So uh, on last class, uh, on the last class, we download the file from um, our e-learning. Uh, so, um, Okay, this is like what we got. It's the ABC sales file. Okay. For anyone who um, load the file already, just be patient. I will just like um, show for um, anyone who haven't got that file. Okay. Um, it's called as sales order Excel file. Once you um, download that file, okay. this one for this file, you can see that we have we have uh, many worksheets in there. Uh, we have many worksheets in there in this file. So that means when you get into um, get all the data into Power BI, I uh, have um, you can get like many worksheets uh, at the same time. Uh, okay. So um, let me just like show you for getting this file once again um, before I just like um, show you another set of getting the file. Uh, in order to download the file into Power BI for um, the top for doing the visualization, we call this thing as getting uh, or get the data uh, from other data source. Uh, um, in this one, it is the data is like prepared in um, Excel formats. Uh, the things that we do is that we just like um, we can go to um, get data uh, in the home tab. And after that, you can just like click on Excel. Uh, so um, in this one is the file that we have uh, in, um, in Excel. Some of the people may just like check the data in um, Excel first and manage it uh, in Excel before um, they get into Power BI. While some of the people, they say that, okay, um, they get directly the data from Excel into Power BI and manage in Power BI itself. Uh, okay, so in this one, suppose I, don't do anything with the Excel, but I just like getting directly and have into Power BI. I'll use Power BI to manage or to manipulate this data. When I click open, you can see that um, Power BI will analyze your data file. It shows us that, okay, we have all together seven worksheets uh, um, <clears throat> on the left-hand side. So in this one, you have to choose what worksheet would you like to get into your into your Power BI. In this one, suppose I choose every worksheet except suppliers. Once I just like move the mouse pointer over each worksheet and then click on that um, the name of the worksheet. On the right hand side, it shows um, the um, preview of the data for you. I have the preview of the data for you. You can see that in here, um, for example, in um, orders in orders worksheet, actually we have like um, a lot of records in there. I have, if you have a look in the original data, I have, if you have a look into the original data, you can see that in the original data, it has like um, almost 1000 records of the data. I have, it's almost 1000 records of the data in the other worksheet. I have, okay. So that means when you go to Power BI, I have, in Power BI, it will just like show the, the first 100 records only I have, as a preview. I have, so that you can just like um, see what's inside I have, um, in all the overview. After that, I have, uh, when you finish, getting um, all these worksheets uh, that you choose already. You can see that right now uh, when I choose. Okay, let me cancel once again, because um, I think I forgot to share the screen to you before. Uh, we click on home tab, get data, uh, Excel, and then we choose the worksheet, uh, sorry, the workbook or the Excel file that we want to get uh, into Power BI. Click open, Power BI will analyze um, for all the worksheets that we have. And then we just like 
click and have a look on the preview on the right hand side. Uh, and then we just choose what worksheet that we would like to get. Um, in this case, assume that I um, haven't choose, I haven't chosen the supplier's worksheet yet. I, have, I just choose um, the rest of the worksheets. After that, you can see that we have like three buttons. I have, we have three buttons on um, this navigator sheet. We have load, transform data, or cancel. Load means that you just like would like to load all of these worksheets without checking on anything. But if you say that, oh, I would like to check on my data, I have, and I may would like to change something a bit or modify my data a bit before I load into Power BI, we click on transform data I have, or we cancel it. I have. Transform data, if we say that, okay, we haven't transformed the data right now, Will it um, be any problem? No, I have. you can just like um, go to transform data later. I have. So for example, in this case, I click load first. I have, um, so that I can transform the data later on. I have. Okay. So when you just like choose everything already, I have um, Power BI will analyze all the data. I have, and then it loads all of your data from Excel file I have, that you chose into the Power BI. I have. Um, the reason why Power BI just takes some time is because it has to analyze the thing that they call model as well. Model I have, is the relationship among different tables I have, or different worksheets that um, Power BI loaded into um, Power BI file. Um, relationship of the um, table, what does it mean? It means that um, do we have any similar do we have any similar column I have, in different worksheet or not? I have. Um, in Power BI, we don't call it as worksheet. I have. We call each worksheet as a table I have, in Power BI. So in this one, if you just like have a quick glance I have, on the model, I have, on the left-hand side is the view in the Power BI. Top left is the <clears throat> report I have, or visualize I have, um, to show the uh, visualizations that we created, like a chart uh, or infographics. Next one is data that you can see, like all the data, like a worksheet, like a table uh, that we have, uh, like this. Um, and the last one is model. Uh, model is the relationship that we have. Uh, let me just like show you a bit. You can see that this one, this one, if you have a look, they are just like all of the, if you just like um, have a look in here, um, they are, they are the column uh, that appears in each, in each worksheet, uh, in each worksheet or in each table that you have uh, in here. Once you finish doing everything, uh, Power BI will just analyze the similarity, uh, are the same name of the column in different worksheets and link them together. So we call this one as a model. Uh, okay, so now let's go back to our data that we, we load into Power BI. Uh, if you go to the data sheet uh, in here, you can see that on the right-hand side, it shows all of the tables uh, that we have. Uh, so once you click on each table, it shows all the columns or all the fields I have, that we have got I have, <clears throat> for that worksheet or for that table. Any column or any field that comes up with sigma or um, summation symbol in front, that means um, it's a column that is like summable. I have. For example, in here, if you see category ID, I have, um, if you see the data inside this column, it consists of numbers one to eight. Uh, if this column is set as the number, it will be summable like this one. Uh, but in here, um, you can see that it is not quite correct uh, because we never sum, we never sum any category ID, but that's okay, uh, no problem at all. If it just say that it is summable, but if you don't sum it, that's okay. Uh, Customer, I have employees, orders, order detail, and product. I have, these are like all of the 
um, columns that you have got in each um, in each um, table. Unfortunately, if you have a look on customer table here, you can see that instead of having have instead of having the column name, it just show as it just show us as column one to column five. That is not what we want. And you can see that the real headers are located in the next row instead. So you have to transform it to make the, the, um, the first row of data to become our headers instead um, that we will manipulate it next on. Um, employees table, it looks okay because if you have a look on the um, column name, everything is all right. And then if we go to orders worksheet or orders table, once again, it shows as column two, three, four, five, six, seven, instead of having the, um, the correct headers, we have to manipulate it. Orders detail is okay. And product table, for product table in here, it has a problem as well because headers are wrong. Okay, so when you see this already, that means you have to do something with the data. I have with a table that we just loaded into Power BI. In this one, we have to use the tools. That is what we call Power Query. Power Query. So in here, what is Power Query and where can we find it? Um, in order to open up the Power Query, we have to use Transform Data button. Where is it? You go to Home. And then you can see that in the queries group in here, queries group, we choose power query. That is what we call transform data here. It's here, I have transform data. Okay, once you click on transform data, it's open up the window that we call power query editor for us, I have the power query editor. When you got the power query editor already, I have, okay, the things that we have to do, is that you have to just like go to um, go to the um, table that you would like to fix the problem. Uh, on the left hand side here, you can see that um, they called this each table as queries. Uh, each table as queries. Um, it means that um, the query editor will manage each query or will manage each table of yours uh, in order to fix the problem. Have, and then you just fix it. Have. Okay, before we fix the problem here, have, let me go back to um, our Power BI screen. Have. So you have to know that Power BI and Power Query Editor are separated into different windows. If you have a look, you can see that we have Power BI desktop in one screen have, and Power Query Editor in another screen. In order to finish the Power Query, have. If you finish doing anything, you have to click close and apply so that it can just like successfully um, save what um, for every step that you have done so far. Have. And then it goes back to Power BI. But right now I haven't done anything yet. I can click close have. and it doesn't ask me for anything. Why do we have to come back to Power BI? Um, if you remember, I forgot to get one sheet. I told you that I do everything. I get every, um, every worksheet except one worksheet. Now, if I would like to get another worksheet into this Power BI, how can I do? Just like um, do um, as the way that we did before. Um, you just go to get the data and choose that worksheet. So that means Power BI will have like um, the existing worksheets or existing tables plus the new table that you are getting. Okay, I go to get data once again. I choose Excel and choose the same file. If you remember, I didn't choose suppliers, right? Now, I will just like get the suppliers um, um, worksheet or suppliers table into my Power BI file. Um, you can do like this. Uh -huh. If we have um, the data in different files, uh -huh. for example, if you say that, okay, for the first file, you have three worksheets that you would like to get into Power BI. 
And the second file, you have two worksheets or two tables that you would like to get that data into Power BI. And the third file, you have one table that you would like to get into Power BI. You can do like this many times, as many times as you want. Now I click suppliers. Okay, this is the preview of suppliers here. Yeah, this is what I want. I click suppliers and then I load into my Power BI. If you have a look, once Power BI finish loading the things, it's also analyzing the data or the conformity of the suppliers with like other worksheets as well, whether they are related or not. And you can see that right now on the right hand side, in the list of the field in the report view, you have supplier table here already. Or if you go to the data sheets, you can see that you also have the suppliers table or supplier worksheets here as well. Now, this is getting um, to get the file from, um, or to get a worksheet from another file I have into Power BI. Okay, now let's um, go to fix the um, problem. What did we do last time? Um, we fixed the problem of um, the wrong headers. In here, okay, once again, I go to transform data once again. Okay. All right. Okay, right now, I have, um, I'll go to check one table at a time or one query at a time. Categories, I have, if you have a look, everything seems to be okay. I have, on um, the column name or column header here, it shows the data type of that column as well. If you would like to change the data type, you come to the Power Query Editor here. Go to the table or the query that you would like to change the data type of some column. When you can locate that column already, you just click on the symbol that symbolizes the data type and then choose what data type that you would like to use. Bear in mind that if you, if you, if you have like, um, the set, if you have the same column uh, in different tables, make sure that the name must be spelled in the same way. For example, if uh, we use category ID uh, in um, the table categories, in another place where category ID is found, the spelling must be the same. It must be category ID as well. If you, if you have category, space ID, that means Power BI cannot justify the relationship among these two different tables. Apart from that one, if you say that, okay, you have another table that you have a column called category number, that means the same thing as category ID. As we are human beings, we understand what they mean. You understand the similarities, but Power BI cannot justify the similarities as you um as you have done. So that's why you have to rename the table. Oh, sorry, you have to rename the column. I have to be the same. So to rename the column, you don't have to do it in, in Excel. Power BI can manage for you. The things that we do is that we go to that table or that query in Power Query Editor, locate that column, and then right click and choose rename then you can rename that column straight away and I have to let them um, be the same. Okay. Okay, now you know how to change data type. You know how to rename each column already. I have. So um, we found that in categories table, I have our category, um, categories query in Power Query Editor doesn't have any problem. You go to the next um, queries or the, to the next table. You can see that right now in the customers, in the customers table here, the headers are wrong because right now, um, row number one contains our real headers. Somebody said that, can I rename one column at a time? Yes, you may do, but you have to do it manually. How do you gonna do it? You just go to column one, right click, rename, and then you type the correct name as you want. For example, you type column, um, you, type, you type customer ID, column two, you type company name and so on. But it wastes a lot of time. 
uh, when we know that the first row contains the column, um, the column name or the header name, you have to do the way that we just like move. Have you have um, to do the way that we move up the first row to be the headers instead. Have okay. So in here, have when we know that our data that we want is located in the first row, have we just go to home tab, have and then on the transform group. You see, use first row as headers. I have you see, use first row as header here. After that, you just click use first row as headers. I have. Okay, then it just replace your data. I have um, the the headers of the table by the first row's data instead. So that means it will be just like change one by one. I have for every single. Um, every single field or every single column have you just check first yeah if it's correct already have um, we move on to the next table for the next table I have you can see that everything is correct already I have scroll to the right and have a look yeah okay just a little bit more that you have to do is that on the right hand side when it shows um, query setting box or um, query setting um, panel, it shows the properties and apply steps. Properties is the name of the is the name of the table. you can rename it if you would like to do. And for the apply steps, it shows us what we have done so far. Um, for the steps, it just go from the top down have in top down uh, manner. Some of the steps are automatically created by Power Query Editor. You don't need to do anything with it. Because you can see that in the employees table here, we, did, we haven't done anything yet, but it just show all, um, some apply step before. Just leave it like that. Now, you can see that we move on to orders table. And you can see that for the orders table here, I have orders table here. Um, the headers are wrong once again, and row number one is our correct headers. Then we have to do it once again by um, replacing I have the headers by row number one. You just go to um, the home tab, go to transform group, and then you see use first row as headers. Just click, I have to replace. Okay. Now we just like um, scroll to the right hand side to check. I have. Apart from the headers name I have, or the column name, you also have to check for the data type as well. I have. Because sometimes um, if the data type is wrong, I have, there will be two things that might happen. The first one, the model might be wrong if um, Power BI is justifying automatically. Second one is that when the data type is wrong, if you're trying to do some visualization, it may be wrong as well. That means um, the visualization sometimes it doesn't show up any any line or any bar uh, to represent the value of that column. One reason might be because of the data type. You have to go back and check. Uh, okay. Now for the orders detail. Yep, it seems to be correct. But for um, the discount. If you have a look on the discount column, um, the discount column in um, our Excel worksheet in orders detail tab, you can see that discount is showing in percentage. Um, actually the value here uh, might be just like um, some, a lot of decimal points, but um, because of the setting, it just show it as just like um, percentage without decimal points. When you get the data of the percentage into Power BI, you can see that right now it just show as the decimal numbers. So if you say that um, we prefer to have the discount to be show as the percentage instead, I have not the decimal points, you can change the data type. I have, we just click on the data type symbol I have on the discount column and then choose percentage. In here, 
um, when um, the Power Query editor asks you นะครับ whether you would like to add a new step or replace current นะครับ try to choose add new steps นะครับ because if there is something wrong you can step back นะครับ one step at a time but if you replace current already นะครับ if you choose replace current and there is something wrong Once you just like undo it, นะครับ or clear that step, uh, it might be possible that some other steps that um, you did correctly might be undo as well, นะครับ So that's why in this one I recommend you to choose add new step, นะครับ Okay. So right now the discount is showing as percentage already, นะครับ And um, on the apply step you have change type one, นะครับ You have change type one. So um, sometimes, if you say that okay, it's just like the minor modification. You didn't just like um, need to enter what you did, But if you say that okay, for change type one here, you would like yourself, you would like to remind yourself, or you would like other people, that you send Power BI file to them to know that what you did. You may have to specify นะครับ the action you did นะครับ so how can you do it so in this one นะครับ you go to change type one นะครับ on the apply step here right click นะครับ and then rename it you may just like type what you want. If I say that I just change from decimal to percent, something like this, so that when you come back later on, นะครับ you can see that what you did. Apart from that one, นะครับ um apart from just like rename renaming the step here, you may right click and choose properties. You can type the description here as well, นะครับ something like this. So this is the steps that you can just like um, enter the description for what you have done. Uh, okay. So um, in this one, it seems like all the detail is okay. We move on to product. Every time when Power BI shows you that this preview may be up to sometimes old, you have to refresh it. Now, so that it will be just like the most recently. Updated version of your data. In this one, once again, it's wrong. Because um, the headers in here is not our correct column name. While the correct column name is located in row number two. So in this one, if it's used first row as headers, it will be wrong for sure. So um, the things that we may do, we may do it twice. For example, in here, Somebody may click use first row as headers, uh -huh, and then click use first row as header once again, so that um, the current uh, the current row number one will become the headers. Yeah. This one is okay. Uh -huh. You can do like this. Okay. What is another way that we do? Uh -huh. Let me just like remove like um, what I did first. In order to undo it, you have to go to apply step. And when you see the apply the step that you don't want, นะครับ, you just like um go to cross symbol in front and then just click to delete. Okay. Okay. Right now, นะครับ, this is the original one that we had. Somebody may say that we will delete the first row out, นะครับ, but we can't do it as we did in Excel, นะครับ. So in Excel, if you go to row number one. Right click and then you can delete. But in this one, you have to choose first row, นะครับ, and then go to Home tab, go to Reduce rows. Now you can see that on the right button it said Remove rows, นะครับ. You just choose Remove rows. It will ask you that okay, what kind of row or what rows you are removing or you want to remove. Then we choose remove top rows here. It will ask you that how many rows would you like to remove or delete. So I don't want just row number one only. Then I choose 
one row. Now it's removed already. The first row is our real headers. Then you can use first row as header. This is the way that we can do in order to get the correct headers. After that, let's check whether it's correct or not for the headers. Okay, everything is correct. Now let's move on to the last table. Table suppliers that we just downloaded. Yeah, everything is correct already. Okay, so when we have like everything um, fixed, I have, you can just like close this Power Query editor and then go back to our Power BI. I have, you can come back to this Power Query editor anytime you want. I have, okay. So I'll close and apply. All the steps will be applied into our um, Power BI. I have. And one good thing for the Power Query editor is that the apply steps I have on the right hand side here. I have. Even you save the file, close the file already, and you open up, it will still show you that, okay, what you have done so far I have for that table. That means, let's say, if you just like use this file for like um, the whole week, and at the end of the week, you would like to know that what, what did I do on um, Monday? You can just go back to the Power Query Editor, I have, and then you can see that in here, we have um, the apply steps that we recorded. And if we say that, oh, um, my boss said that the data type here, I don't need to use it as the, um, I don't need to use it as the percent. I can use it as a decimal point. You can just like um, remove this step anytime you want uh, because it's always recorded in the Power Query Editor. Uh, same as when I mark you the score I have in final exam as well. If I say that, okay, change the step, sorry, change the data type from um, decimal point to be number. I have, that means you have, to, um, you have to go to Power Query Editor, change it here. Somebody say that, can I do like this? I go to my Excel and then I just change the data type here. I have, I change the data type here and upload it. No, you can't do it. Because in the exam, if I say that, okay, you have to do it in Power BI. If you do it in Excel and then you get this file into Power BI, the Power Query editor will not show the steps of changing the data type. So that means you don't get the score of changing the data type in Power BI. I have an I'll test you for that one as well. Okay, right, okay. Now let's close and apply. I have let's close and apply. Once you click close and apply, I have Power BI, you have to analyze for what you have done into Power BI. I have, okay. All right. Okay, so right now, I think in um, the Power BI is ready for us, is ready for us. Um, when you go back to Power BI, in the data sheets, if you have a look on um, like all of the table, you can see that the columns are fixed already. Everything is just like fixed. I have as we um, did before, All right? Apart from that one, I have, when we finish um, fixing all of the problem in Power BI already, I have like we we do the um, transforming of the data already, I have, or when we just like finish fixing the problem in the Power Query Editor. I just want you to see one thing. If you go to model, I have the model view in Power BI, I have, you can see that right now for the model, it just like show the relationships for you. I have the relationship here means here, when you see the line, I have that links between one table and another table. This is what we call relationship. 
for example i'll show you the relationship between customer table and orders table there is a line here if you just double click on the yellow line the things that you will see is the relationship between these two tables customers and orders you can see that in here um, there will be a column uh, in these two tables I uh, have a column in these two tables that is showing in gray color I'm sorry that is showing in gray color you can see that they are customer ID so the relationship will be created between these two tables because they have the same column so in this one you can see that in the orders table you don't know which customer purchased from us you know that um, this customer id is h-a-n-a-r uh -huh. but if you want to know that who is h-a-n-a-r you have to go to customers table and find that h-a-n-a-r is someone uh -huh. something like that so that's why um, power bi need to have the relationship uh -huh. in case that power bi cannot create the relationship for you correctly the things that you can do is that you can just create the relationship by yourself by what means um, we just go to the columns that you want to link them uh -huh. for example in here okay let me just delete this one first suppose power bi cannot justify this line between customers and orders and you want to create it by yourself you know that customers table and orders table both of them have a column called customer id uh, so you can just like simply drag the customer id from one table and release it to the customer customer id of another table like this I drag from customer table and release at orders table. So in this one, Power BI will create the relationship for you uh, that you can have a look inside. But I mean, I can tell you that most of the time, uh, Power BI can help us to justify this when uh, you have two conditions. The first one, column names between those two tables are the same. In this one, you have the same name, customer ID, same column name in both tables. Then um, Power BI can justify. Second one, um, the data type between those two columns should be the same. If customer ID is number, the customer ID in another table should be number as well. Otherwise, if you say that customer ID in one table is text and the other one is number, then it will be confusing for power bi then it might justify it for you wrongly okay when we finish this one okay this is the relationship um, but i mean um for the exam i will not ask you to create the relationship like this when you get the data the relationship should be just like um justify automatically because i will name the column in the same name and i will also set them um try to set them as the same data type Okay, now we have we have the data that is ready already. We um, the process that we did in order to get the data, I have um, is like um, we try to clean the data in the Power Query Editor already. I have the process that we go into Power Query Editor. I have the first one that we eliminate the um, the first row that is the now row. And we try to just like change the data from a first row, the first row to become the headers. We call it as um, cleansing, data cleansing or cleaning the data. We call normally we call it as data cleansing if we're talking about like Power BI. Yes. Uh, which column? Can you please show the screen to me, please? Yes. Which one, Park? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, because this one, I, have, I can tell you that actually the real discount is 0%. If you want to know in this one, if you are not sure, I have, please um, refer to the data in your Excel. 
for example let me just show you 10508 นะครับ let me share my screen to you okay like this if you have a look my one is zero this one looks suspicious right why it is zero now let me show you that if i show you in excel because it's zero. That's why in your Power BI is zero. Okay. When I just like um, try to verify the data, first time I just like, I was surprised as well why it shows just zero. But one thing that I'm sure that um, our getting the data is not wrong is because of this. You just click on filtering and you can see that it's not just zero. It has some other data as well. That means this one, it gets correctly. Okay. Right. Okay. Any other questions for um, this first part that we um, try to transform the data and then um, cleanse um, the data?